So I decided to start a new playthrough in Hearts of War as the Celtic Republic. This is something that Road to 56 adds as a as a possible focus tree or map setup. What you have to do is select the custom game rules and then scroll down to where is it? Map set. Once you come down to United Kingdom fragmentation status, you can you can choose um Rented, United Ireland, or Celtic Unification. Where all Celtic states will be united under the Scottish tag, but to play it, click on Ireland. This is mainly so that we can um, have a country to start with, but none of this is really going to matter. And you can see from some of this, I was just playing around with other things, ignore them. I have done one game having a look at this just to see how it works out. This is going to be my actual playthrough. And it is going to show a game over screen for Ireland, just that doesn't matter. Basi basically, they had to kind of jury rig it, modders had to jury rig that in. It is also possible to form this Celtic Republic by by starting as Ireland. You have to go down the, the fascist path and join the Axis, and then you will gain claims on Scotland, Northern Ireland, which we already had in the base game, the Isle of Man, Cornwall, Wales, Brittany. Yeah, this is the um, game over screen, and then it goes in here. So here's the Celtic Republic in the 1st of January, 1936. We currently own Ireland and Northern Ireland, Wales, Scotland, and Brittany. We also have claims on our neighbours are the UK, France. France are mild are irritated at us because we we hold Brittany. Whereas um England is very annoyed at us because we hold some of their provinces, or provinces they've claimed, and we have claims on some of their provinces as well. Now, I put historical AI on, so I might, I'm probably going to go with the Allies here. I mean, we probably could, if we did this properly, if we did join the Axis, we probably could rush England and just hold in France, in Brittany. I suspect that if, if I do join the Allies, most of it will involve holding in Brittany. So, let's have a look at the focus tree first. That little two. So, starting at the left, we have basically building up our, mil our military and industry combined into one tree. It's the nice way of doing it. Building up our air force. Seems to be it's the aircraft of the future. Didn't they say used to say that the bomber will always get through? Yeah, there's a, there's not really too much much to say here. There is going to be some some color for this artillery kills, infantry occupies. And there's not really too much to say here, it's just... Oh, what's it say? The bravest or maddest of us all must be handpicked to form elite units able to silently kill the enemy with bows if necessary. <laughs> but I think that's a reference to a real-life guy called uh, Jack Churchill, who... Was involved with the command with the British commandos in World War Two. Look, I can't I can't remember it now. I'll probably add something. In, I'll probably add something in later. But that's what I love about this mod. Not only have they done done some fantastic stuff like this, but they've added some extra humor into the game. But moving on, this will be building up our 
or navel tree. And just looking at this now, this does that. I do like the idea of making our screens 10% cheaper than this industrial broom. I've seen that with other companies, countries. I think I still have some leftovers from the banana M run I just completed. But yeah, I've seen this in other, in other countries as well. There's nothing special here. Just a nice, nice buff if you can get up to more than 45 pounds. And then our physical tree. Start by performing a provisional government, and then we can either choose a monarch or go for a republic. I'm probably going to lean towards a republic. Once we choose a republic, we need to go with democratic constitutionalism or communism or fascism. And looking at this now, I'm not sure why we why this really. We'd have this because we already have Brittany. I don't know. There is also the monarchist path, but need to invite a monarch to save the crown. Yeah, I love the amount of lampshade hanging they have here. Giving absolute power of the state to a noble who has just arrived in the country. What could possibly go wrong, really? So, ooh, this is interesting. Now, this might actually be worth another time going down this, but making sure Germany is set to return the Kaiser. Or go down the monarchist path there. And then we have this Celtic unification tree, which I think all of this is shared with Ireland. So it's basically just build, building, building up the lands we own. As for Mayos, let's have a look at our. So we have the Royal Ordnance Factory Dalmuir, which is just yeah, pretty a pretty standard artillery one. Nothing nothing too unusual here. Eddingham Munitions Factory, which is just infantry equipment. Again, there's nothing there's nothing unusual here. Same with Albion Motors. Yeah. Train manufacturer, just and pretty, pretty generic stuff. For planes, we have a general aircraft manufacturer. And if we complete develop Brittany, we can give our fighters 10% extra agility. That's interesting. Well done the workshop. If we develop Ireland, we get this. This is pretty standard from most of my Ireland playthroughs. It's just a it's a multi-role designer, and they usually end up doing multi-role. Or if we develop Ireland, we also get Nicholson and Bass, or the Short Brothers. These two are av available to Ireland if they have control of Northern, of Northern Ireland. We also have Scottish Aviation, which is multi-role tactical. Hmm. Interesting. Let's just do production efficiency for all medium planes and extra efficiency for transport planes. And then William Beardmore and Company, just naval aircraft. I'm not going to bother with that because they're just slightly too sized. Look at this um, rebound. Hmm, fabric skin. Make some. Fabric. We can put them out quicker. And they're fast. They're more agile. Or metal skin to make, make them faster and more advanced. Hmm. Speed, glory, speed. Speed is key! Let's increase our fuel usage. Another playthrough I've been looking at some short brothers for naval, naval patrol bombers, but probably not going to bother this time around. 
have a look at the AV Myos. Standard escort sheet, escort ship manufacturer. Again, nothing unusual here. Press Arsenal Dockyards, requires us to have developed Brittany, which is in battleship, battle line ship builds. So, battleships, battle cruisers, cruisers really. Probably not going to bother with those because they're just not really worth it if you don't have them already. I haven't checked their Navy yet, so we'll see. Press Arsenal Submarine Base. Again, these guys are just dedicated subs. Ooh, I do like the mass production of subs. Might go with this because subs are just too good to mass up in this game. Again, if we develop Brittany, we get the Lorient Arsenal, which I'm not sure what this gets us over the standard escort fleet. Yeah, it doesn't seem to give us anything. Ireland and Wool. That requires us to develop Ireland. And then we get Task Force Builders for destroyers, cruisers, carriers. And it might be worth we or might be worth looking at later, but I'm not gonna bother. Yarrow shipbuilders requires us to be at peace with England Let's give us basically the set, basically another duplicate my own. John Brown and Company requires us to have invited a particular company. Not sure how we'd unlock that. But they're a raiding fleet designer. Antrim Torpedo Factory requires us to, to have that pretty a standard. Yeah, same same as this, but we need to develop Northern Ireland for it. And we already have one available. Raiding fleet. So you know, I'm probably just gonna go with the ones I already have. Though this one might be good for just general for submarine specific, but I'd say this might actually be just be the one to go with. And then tanks. Standard tank manufacturer, so cheaper, but they're more expert, but they have got worse armor and defense. And if we develop our end, we get the Great Southern Railways. We also will produce railways. Mr. Thompson requires us to have developed Ireland. It's like that's for all technology, all armor. This is only for light and medium. For North British locomotive, which is available already. Honestly, I'm probably going to go with the North British locomotives. And let's see, what else can we? So our head of state, John McCormick, is a welfare proponent. So economy laws will be cheaper. And people will be will will be less likely to surrender because they are invested in their country that cares about them. We do require more factories. Mm -hmm. so we've got the usual the usual revolutionary reformer demagogue, conservative nationalist. Hmm. Extra stability, extra construction speed. Requires us to be fascist and complete the and focus. A woman's figurehead who increases our recruitment population factor by a significant amount. And some stability. Bog standard uh, capital industry. Prince of terror. Makes it harder to gain. Hard for people to spy us. Smooth talking charmer, pretty standard. Elusive gentleman, person agency. Do we have any non-core core population? I don't think so. First, the lack of... Hmm. I'm probably going to go with um, Jenny Lee here. Just, so, just for that extra stability and population, durable population factor. 
this guy once it's available then probably be a toss up between this guy to start and maybe this guy later but oh by the way theorists oh my these guys are very cheap industrial concern bog standard electronics concern nothing's there Ooh, Parsons People's Engineering Works provides massive boost to naval bases and dockyard construction speed and a boost to industrial research. Not a very, not a particularly high one, but it's still a boost. Again, this is what this comes up a lot in my around playthroughs. It's basically just a good solid. Other one here. Yeah, uh, this is pretty pretty standard. Probably not going to bother. I can't remember is if the synthetic resource research speed buff stacks with industrial research speed, or if it overwrites it. But I think I might just go with this one because naval bases. If we're supporting the Allies, we might end up doing that a lot. So chief of army. These guys are really cheap. Something is what? So defense, offense, organization. Probably going to go with defense because I suspect we are going to be holding, holding Britain quite a bit. Chief of Navy. Ship armor. Screen attack, defense. Naval maneuvering. Chief of Air Force. I'd say probably this guy to start with, given how cheap they are. So, these guys are yeah, cheap. Infantry specialist, I think I might, I think he might be a general if that's the case, but I'll need to check. This name does ring a bell. It's been a while, it's been a while since I read A Bridge Too Far. Great book, haven't seen the movie. I seem to recall this was one of the one of the um, senior commanders of Operation Market Garden. The attempt at was Arnhem taking the bridge, taking the bridges at Arnhem. No anti-submarine. I'd say out of all these, I might I'm probably gonna go with our infantry specialist because infantry will be the bulk of our stuff. Regrouping expert might be helpful. This might be helpful if I go with paratroopers later. Away, while away from that. Hmm. But anyway. Oh my, we have a huge navy. Let's just merge them all up and see what see what that is like. Now for the ground forces, what do we have? Uh, the this is basically the stand the initial infantry template for Ireland. This is it's, it's not great, but it's not but it's not awful. Probably use this as a training division because yeah, it basically takes about. Takes three months to train this up, whereas what else have we got? Ooh, what's this? Colonial garrison. Useless. Don't want. Ooh, for equipment and artillery. You know, I'm probably going to make this our standard infantry division because we have it already. This is actually just a very good solid defensive one. Like the basic one we had down here is actually good enough is it's good enough to start with, but support artillery and engineers already added on. That is huge. Let's see, cavalry brigade, I do not want this. Useless. So yeah, I've got a lot of things here that aren't very much use. Uh, 
Now we have quite a lot of old and frankly awful ships. And a lot of very small airframes, air wings. Put them here and have them all merge up. With the recent developments, the Celtic world has been united under the leadership of John McCormick. Naval patrol bombers. These naval bombers, carrier fighters, carrier bombers. Well, I don't have any bombers, so these are utterly useless. Naval bomber, what have these got? Uh, and of course, they are all equipment, so I can't do shit with them. Support. There's I'll see these are probably, probably gonna get rid of most of those at some point. This guy not well we have Oops. that is really annoying. I'll pause for a moment to figure out what I'm doing and I will be back in a minute. So my first the first thing I've noticed looking through this is I have a few decent, decent amount of research to start with. Like we're all the way down into radio detection. So I guess the first thing is computing. We have oil storage, field production. Machine tools, construction. Once it goes to aluminium later, but for now, I think synthetic oil experiments is going to be way more important. And start the start this just to get the access to the extra myos. Like I said, we've got this one unit up here that is absolutely stuck. The Hong Kong BDF. Probably gonna just gonna delete. We're also very short on on military factories, and we also need artillery. Not short of for equipment. Short of trucks. Short of. I think we are not short of. Currently on the civilian economy, so how much I can really do about this. Looking for fighters or bombers. Well, it's gonna just right. How am I gonna do this? to distribute them in task forces. What's this one? Cruisers and destroyers might subs go there on their own one. Might have this as a kind of naval invasion fort for naval invasion support around the Bay of Biscay in the English Channel. This one going to move to Dublin and act as a general strike force. This one will stay here and remain a strike force. Still leaves this one, which is not great. I might just split some of these up a bit into Yeah, quite a lot of cruisers.
So I'll probably split them off into into a recon. A class, Deander and Denny. Low max speed. Absolutely cool. Probably going to use our. So, what can we build? Right now, nothing. So, convoys. Rename this train. Curve. Animal court. Don't need. Put them on an army so I can actually do something with them. Three brigades. Delete. Person aside from this Hong Kong VDF. Delete. We're not really short of manpower, it's just equal. Me here, just kind of that makes sense. Want this guy on, on an army. I'm gonna basically have hit have him ready to go with the the Britain. Okay, so planning speed, supply consumption, but extra. Infantry. Probably that. Probably this guy. Let's see. Ah, uh, this is annoying. This counts as encircled. So if I delete it, we lose their equipment and manpower. Which minuscule amount, but it's still stuff I just don't want to lose. Well, since we have so many convoys, we may as well just sell a load off. See if we can use that to build up our industry a bit. Oh, we can't actually build... ...build trades. What the hell? The reason I'm going down these so far it immediately is to try and... ...get some infrastructure. This will give us some factories, some some myos. This I'm not gonna bother with until much later. Basically, Celtic integration, develop Ireland, because I am Irish. Then develop Brittany. Then we're probably going to spend a lot of time trying to hold Brittany, so this will be handy. The rest of oil industry would be nice, very helpful. Basically, this gives us an extra dockyard and a civilian factory. So probably this, then develop Ireland, then develop Brittany. And then... Establish the army. Dingham ammunition factory. Bellamere oh, shells. There's just a lot, a lot of stuff I need to do. Oh, just know something very interesting here. Under Celtic Unification, we have the option to approach the Bardic Circles. Francois Yapernot, or under his foreign known self chosen name, Taldir, Wall of Steel, is the leader of the Grand Druid of the Gursed of Brittany and has been very popular in the Breton sectors. 
Now that the Celtic Union has been formed, we could really use his skills in our government. I have no idea what that's going to do. But let's find out, because I've already spent some a little command power and political power I had just getting these two guys. Oh, that's there he is. So what does he give us? Extra stability, extra war support. Ooh, division attack on defense on core territory. You have approached the Bardic Circles. Whatever that means. <laughs> okay. I have to say, I love the humor in this. I know it's kind of nonsensical. Oh, look, how good of you to join us, Hong Kong. So now we gain all that infantry equipment back and manpower. Which is still not a lot, but we need to claw back whatever we can. Don't need free, don't need colonial. Take your like at that. Yeah, we actually have a lot of things already researched there, right? So this is one area where Ireland was ahead. We had the, had this already unlocked. We don't now. Boo. So I've actually been at this for half an hour already, just getting set up, and I haven't even been playing for two weeks of game time. So I'm going to end this episode here, just to make make it just to avoid making it too long. But I'll continue in, in another one almost immediately after this. So, I'll, I'll see you in the next one. If you have any suggestions for how to play this or other playthroughs you might like, put them in the comments below. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one.